Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme five, element 10, Savannah Grasslands. Hand out the exercise books, please. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute geography teacher. Today we're reviewing the distribution of Savannah Grasslands and some of the characteristics. And like all good geography lessons, let's start out with another map. So the Savannah Grasslands are usually found within the tropics in bands around five to 15 degrees north and south of the equator. So on my map, this is the orange, although it is worth noting that they've grouped savanna and tropical grasslands together. So places like the Mediterranean, we wouldn't class as being the savanna. So you can see five degrees is around here. So you've got five to 10 degrees as this band across uh, Central Africa. You've got some going into South America and Southeast Asia. Now they tend to occur between the rainforests and the deserts, which are the green and the lighter orange on my map. So some of the examples of countries that they're in, so Brazil in South America, you've got Tanzania in Africa, India in Asia, and also some in Australia as well, which you can see just at the bottom here. The climate for the savannah is quite different to the tropical rainforest. So where the tropical rainforest had lots of rain throughout the year with some dips and fair peaks, the savannah has a rainy season and that happens during their summer in the northern hemisphere. So you can see a massive increase and then a significant drop off. So it has a dry and a rainy season. The temperature does fluctuate slightly, but when you consider it goes between 25 and 28 degrees, and in the UK we can go from between minus 2 to 28, maybe it's even 30 degrees Celsius, it's not a huge uh, shift in temperature. And again, that's the reason why these uh, savannah grasslands are found where they are, because they require an area with no rain very little moisture for a significant part of the year and that's going to happen away from that area of low pressure along the equator. When we're talking about the vegetation that you might find there I thought it would be interesting to look at this continuum. So it doesn't happen in clear divide so it's not just rainforest lying down the middle savanna. It goes as a continuum from a lot of vegetation and reduces down to where we have savanna here and then into desert. So if we do try and describe what the vegetation actually look like, it's a collection of scattered trees, tall grasses and drought and fire resistant bushes. So if I show you a picture as an example here, we've got some trees that are scattered around, but again, these are not significantly tall. We've got some bushes in the background and then we've got the grasses here. At the minute in this picture, the grasses aren't very tall, but during the rainy seasons, they can get up to four meters high. So that's twice the height of an average human. So you've got a significant contrast in the vegetation that you get depending on if it's the rainy season or the dry season. Now, I've already mentioned some adaptations there. So we've got the fire resistance and drought resistance. But I'm going to look at two trees in, uh, in significant detail. So we've got the baobab tree to start with. Now, what's interesting about the baobab is that it grows significantly taller than the trees around it. So it grows up to 30 meters tall. But probably even more interesting is the fact that you can get them up to seven meters in diameter. So to put that into context, you probably need five people standing hand in hand around it just to go around the circumference of that tree. And the reason why it's so wide is because it uses its trunk of the tree to store water during the dry season. So you have an available mass of vegetation to store that water for when it needs it most. Its bark is also particularly thick. And this has two uh, significant reasons. The first one is that it prevents water from being transpired, so being evaporated out of the tree. And also, when we get bushfires, which happen quite a lot during the dry seasons in the savannah, it's also fire resistant, so it's more likely to survive a bushfire. Finally, it's got really shallow roots, really wide, but really shallow. And the reason for that is the rains, when they come, the tree wants to be able to pick up as much of that water and much of the nutrients that comes with it as possible. 
So to keep those roots closest to the surface means it's got the better chance of collecting as much water and nutrients as it can. So if we contrast that with the acacia tree here, so it's got a really broad top and the reason for that is, it, and really narrow, is it's trying to minimise its surface area to pre prevent transpiration. It also provides shade for a range of animals, which is not its initial adaptation. It's also covered in loads of fawns, and the reason for that is to try and stop animals from eating its leaves. And that's another reason why its leaves are also clustered at the top of the tree, although there are animals that have... Um, adapted around that. So for example, the giraffe has a really long prehensile t um, tongue which is able to rip the leaves off without uh, cutting itself on the fawns. Its root structure is actually really deep. So they've got what are called tap roots. And tap roots go really deep into the ground to try and get to the water sources that are close to the bedrock. Now this is water that's really, really far down. So these roots stretch really deep as opposed to the baobab trees that stay close to the surface. Well, that's it for today. Now be like the acacia tree and tap deep into the available resources by completing the try it now tasks for homework. Class dismissed.